Hello everyone, uh, this is a new show coming to you from Dame Dash Studios called Protect Your Pieces. Uh, the premise of this show is myself discussing with others that I feel have mastered what I called protecting your pieces. Uh, any experience, person, place, or thing that you might hold sacred to yourself that you feel like is a part of you or your identity uh, we tend to guard those things with our life. Some people have maybe gone inward with that. Some others were able to take that as a superpower and share that with others. Um, I want to talk to these people specifically because there is something that I see in them that I relate to and something that I want to learn. So these pieces that they are protecting we're here to, you know, gain some knowledge from. Uh, today I have Wes Hamilton, who has been on a few shows, but to me that's almost, that is not why it's important for me to talk to you today. What you've experienced and the way that you've grown is why I have you here, and I'm glad to be speaking with you. Uh, but I don't want to tell your story for you, so I would like for you to introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, truly an honor. So my name is Wesley Hamilton. Um, first and foremost, I always tell people that I'm not my accomplishments. I'm just Wesley. So um, I like to start that because I feel like there's a connection to people when they can feel like they can be you too. Um, so outside of that, um, I'm a, I'm a you know public figure. You see me on TV. I've been on a lot of different shows. I'm an adaptive athlete. Um, you know, public you know speaker. I do a lot. Um, I'm a founder also of a nonprofit back home. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, mm -hmm. um, and my nonprofit organization is called the Disabled But Not Really Foundation. That's something I'm very passionate about, and something I really represent is to really teach people with disabilities how to push past their mental limits. Yeah, you said it's about instilling a physical and limit, physical and mental limitless mindset. Yes, something along it's those all lines. about instilling a limitless mindset. For some of us uh, who don't have as many obstacles in front of us as maybe the next person, uh, you know, this limitless mindset could be something that's holding them back, it could be an experience maybe from a past, or a limited mindset rather, yeah. is something you know, that came from someplace else. Yourself, did you, did you have a limit, did you feel like you had a limited mindset before oh, yeah, very, things that happened? Very much so. I think when I speak of limitless mindset, when I think of just my whole um, mission and vision of my organization, I speak of it from the perspective of who I used to be and who I am now. Mm. And I look at, you know, the Wesley, you know, up until the age of 24, for your listeners, your viewers, um, I was shot multiple times at the age of 24 and suffered a spinal cord injury, which left me paralyzed from the waist down. Mm. So just so they can have a visual. Um, but prior to my accident, I always, now I feel that I was disabled mentally because I did, I was limited by circumstance. Okay. And you know, you grow up as a black man in America, there's not a lot of outlets for you that is being demonstrated. Correct. You know, so when you think of access, you know, more black youth and just black people in black communities or, you know, and underserved communities, which I hate that word, um, but yeah, because, because it's true and because it sucks, and it, we probably shouldn't be having to use it. You know? No, we it don't. No but sense. it just looks good for you know <laughs> certain it certain things. Good, yeah. yeah, you know, for certain people. And mm -hmm. but I never, I never seek the ambitious life. I never seek the life of opportunity. I was ready to die at the age of twenty-one just because of how I lived. Yeah. You know, movies and music and all the influences that you could find representation of yourself, right? So we go into that. Like yeah. a limited mind 
isn't just due to you having access or opportunities and they're being put in front of you. A limitless mindset is because you don't know what's mm -hmm. out there There's for no you. There's no example. There's no example. Of the opposite, correct? Yeah, and then the representation that you do have is really representing the life that you probably don't want to live, but that's what you think you only have. Or they want you to... S the brainwashing, yes. the programming is ridiculous. That Actually, it's funny because Dame Dash Studios, his whole thing is programming that is deprogramming. Yes. The, nothing that you will see on his... Uh, Dame Dash Studios has like shootouts or game banging. Maybe in the movies, yeah, like Honor yeah. Up and stuff is on there. But that's not, you know, what he, the message he's trying to push. That's not the message that you're trying to push. Uh, and I see that there are people even where I went to high school, mm -hmm. you could call it an underserved uh, community. It's hard for them to even think outside of getting a nine to five at a restaurant. For them, like, for them, that's a cap and they've accepted that that's okay. For some people, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. They don't have, you know, the, the want for maybe something flashy. That, I don't know how else to put it. But what do you, what do you think about things like that? Because there are some of us from there who are able to see, you know, past where we came from, and some people get stuck. Yeah, I think this, you know, it's, again, I think it's all due to circumstances and not knowing, knowing if you can access it. Like now with social media, mm -hmm. it's giving people the opportunity to understand that they can create whatever they want. But when, you know, when we were growing up, it just wasn't there. It was, yeah. you know, you didn't have social media, so. Being an actor or being, you know, a sports player or anything in like a field that you would see on television um, just seemed like it was out of reach if yeah. you didn't know somebody, right? And then when you think of jobs, um, I just had a meeting about this where when you think about jobs, a lot of people don't know the scale in, in jobs, right? A lot of people don't know that you can be an entrepreneur, that you mm -hmm. can go into a system and work your way up to the top. You know, and so I think when, you know, for that person that is working a nine to five, that's working, say they work at McDonald's, might not thought that they could work instead of cash register to a manager. Right. Because those things a aren't. There. It is. It's not communicated. You know, it's not communicated even in the, in the, in the books. You know, somebody needs the workers, somebody needs to be in control of the workers. Mm -hmm. But when you have a certain demographic that you're focused on to be the more, the laborers, then you're not going to, in, in, you're not going to do anything to influence them to go more than do that. Different. And so I think that's where people get stuck. It's like creating a habit. So if you allow people to only create a habit to limit themselves to circumstance, well, now they're not going to worry about anything else because it doesn't seem like it's part of it. Yeah. They're going to get uncomfortable. Most people in the world don't want to be uncomfortable. You only grow when you're uncomfortable. Well, I didn't start growing until I was paralyzed, and that was because every day I was uncomfortable. You know, and so very much so. It forced you. I don't like that, though, that, that you were forced into that. For you, uh, it's the reason why I'm so interested in your story, and I, I don't want to, I look up to you in a way, is because there's something that you have that I don't. Uh, and when it comes to mentality, when I could... It could be the littlest thing. This, this, this could sound so bad. It could be the littlest thing that happens to me during my day. I might go home completely defeated, like mm -hmm. ready to end it all. And for you to say, you know, you didn't, you were not happy. You said you didn't smile until after you were, <laughs> yes. you were <laughs> paralyzed. And, you know, I experienced my father died 10 years ago in November. And I feel that way too. Since then, like every smile is just fraud. Like I don't feel like I've smiled from my heart mm. since then. So like I see you as me in the future once I get over whatever hump this yeah. is. So that's why I wanted to talk to you and learn from you in that regard. Yeah, I mean, well, you think about happiness and a lot of people don't understand happiness in a sense that you're thinking that you have to be happy like there's an action to make you happy. Mm. And for me, I smile because I'm just happy that there's life still inside of me. Um, yes, it was a journey to get to that mindset, but it's something that I wouldn't take away. You know, it's gratitude. Like, what are you grateful for? For me, it's just life.
you know, being understanding that I could have lost my life. Yeah. And at the moment of thinking that I was about to die, the only main regret I had was the fact that I never lived. You know, and, and you don't know that until your life flash in front of you. Mm-hmm. But why dwell on, you know, so many things that are pulling you away from living? Or why take yourself and be unhappy because you might not have the things that someone else has or you might not be able to do? You know, what are you grateful for, though? Yeah. You know, like for me, it took away. All right, Wesley. Let's, all right, you're not, you're not happy about the situation. You might not be happy about traffic. You might not be happy about just wait. I got to wake up every day and really relive the fact that I can't walk, right? Yeah. So that's a reality. I can tell you right now, be confident out of everything I say and say, yeah, I'm just happy and blessed. But what if I wake up tomorrow and I got pain and my body's doing something? Well, it can have me yeah, defeated. It can, so I have to accept that every day. So every day I wake up, it's more or less of what am I grateful for? Because I already know the adversity that I have to face. So mm. if I already have so to face So why are we it, reminding ourselves of that and not just kind of pushing past it? Pushing, pa- pushing past the limit because it becomes a limitation to you if you dwell on it because you put so much energy into something you, don't, you can't control, mm-hmm. right? Be- a, I can't control the fact that I can't walk. But if I sit there and dwell on it, it will control me where the rest of my day is wasted. Right. It becomes a limitation. So every day now I'm like, I can't walk. So because because I can't walk, this is all the stuff I can't do. So you're going to do what you can. Exactly. And appreciate that. And be grateful. And what you find is that you find a way to make everything, you know, accessible to yourself in life. I have one more question. This one might be a little bit darker. Make Uh, them dark. Make them dark. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, the strength. It t- it's it's something else that it takes for you to first you accepted what's happened mm-hmm. then after that the way you were the bigger man and you th- to thank anyone for any type of negative action towards you is crazy like to me again back to the loss i experienced yeah. how how do you look at a situation that's so dark and negative and be appreciative for it? And how do you, how are you able to to sit there? Yeah. You know, I feel like that that takes something <laughs> I don't have. I, I look at my journey, right? Like I look at my life, I look at my journey, I look at everything. At the age of 24, shot multiple times. I, I had been blessed with a beautiful daughter prior to my injury. Um, you know, even got even got blessed to have sole custody of her right after my injury. Um, and, you know, that was one big thing for me. It was like I was still here to be a father. So I, I want to share, start there. But my next couple of years, it was dark. Mm. No, I, I couldn't accept the fact that I had lost the mobility in my legs. On top of that, I was shot, you know, over a dispute over an ex-girlfriend. And it just... For me, it caused a lot of trust issues. It caused a lot of self-confidence issues because I was really there. Like, I always tell people, like, I didn't know what love felt like to that day. Like, even though I was tied to somebody for years, we could say I love you all the time, but until you see, like, what causes and effects happen from toxic 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 relationships and things like that, you never know. And so, for me... I was I was bitter after that, you know, because I felt like I had we had already broken up and I shouldn't have been there. But, you know, one thing led to another. I'm there. Now, it's up to me to decide if I'm leaving or not. So this is where it comes to, like, how can I, you know, and, and for people that's listening, I had an opportunity on national TV to meet the man that shot me and tell him thank you. You know, and, and um, how did I get there? Right. And yeah. it's it's like, you know. When you look at, again, I'm just looking at my journey and I'm looking at all the things and even the day that everything transpired, we as humans easily put the blame on somebody else when it's when you can Mm -hmm. when something happens to you rather is you know that's our uh, first resort is to try to figure out what outside of me exactly yeah you know it's never taking full accountability um my years of being dark being negative hating myself like i had suicidal thoughts i had all of those things i went through all the emotions of giving up right but i had a little girl i had to raise 
You know, so for me, also as a man, as a black man, trying to be a black father in a world that doesn't, that shames black fathers, mm-hmm. I never wanted my daughter to see weakness. So for these years, I was weak. I was weak, and I hated everything about myself, and I wanted to fix the hate that I had on myself. Not about how I care. Like, I didn't care about the man that shot me at that moment. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get better. Yeah. I got to be a father. At the end of the day, I had to be a father out of all things. So I needed to be strong enough to be a father instead of feeling less as a man because I'm letting somebody else do my job. Mm-hmm. And so because of that, my life got better, right? I got healthy. I started to overcome a lot of challenges that I was facing before I started, before I got paralyzed. Interesting. I was overweight my whole life. Five, 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 I'm five, five, 250 pounds is probably my max. And sitting and being overweight really just bothered me. It put me through health complications. I faced two years of bed rest, you know, 21 after hours a day fact. after. Oh, wow. You know, so those wow. first years was dark. They was hard. But I remember... Reaching out, asking the doctor, how can I be more active in my daughter's life? And he said, protein. Add more protein to your diet. I didn't know what that meant, but I was determined. So I went to school. I educated myself. I became a dietitian. I learned all this nutrition after my injury where I fell in love. I lost 100 pounds, mind blown, became an award-winning adaptive athlete after that. I didn't even work out before my accident. So again, I never... Oh, that's interesting because you're into the... Uh, weightlifting, you lift yourself <laughs> in the chair. I can't even do one pull up now. That's, I can't like understand. seriously, like yeah. like I was. What I did was I took control of my life, right? Like I took control yeah. of all the things that could make me feel good. That meant nutrition. That meant you know fitness, physical activity. If I want to be strong and maneuver to raise this little girl, I need to be strong in this chair, right? Yeah. So it then to become like a part of it. Yeah. Has, I had to embody it. I had to accept it in order for me to move forward, right? So I accepted it. I accepted it and I took control of my life. I started doing things for myself that I couldn't do when I was walking, when I was walking, I didn't jog down the street. I didn't work out. Instead, I thought hustling and doing the negative was the way I needed to live my life. And what led to that was the mindset that I had the day that I got shot. So what I'm getting to is that my actions and emotions played a part in the day of me being shot. The man that shot me was called over, right? Oh, so, after then, the fact. so then that means I could have left and we would have never, I would probably not be here. Mm-hmm. But because I stayed and I was shot and I was paralyzed and now I had to go through all these levels of adversity to become who I am, I'm now grateful. Because now I'm living a life that I've never imagined living. Now I'm living a life that I created my own identity to live. I'm not living a path that was designed by systems and racism and things, you know, from years ago. That was what I got shot over. I was reborn that day. So what does rebirth look like? And for me, also as a black man, there was never forgiveness in the community, but there was never accountability in the community either. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody wouldn't say, well, I might have tried to rob this person, uh... right? Like somebody come to you and you're doing something negative and it comes back on you. You know, it's like, oh, I caught somebody slipping, trying to come shoot them. They come back to shoot you. Yeah. So it's like, where's the story going to be told to say who was in the wrong when it's so easy to be the victim? Yeah. And for me, everybody would say... You know, like, oh, man, I'm, you know, it's sad that you got shot. I'm like, but my life's so good now. Like, what, what, are, you, what are you sorry for? Because I can't walk. Is that what you, that, is that your strength every day to get on two feet and move? Because I'm out here moving. And I'm grateful for moving. And my legs ain't got no, like, they don't have to do anything yeah. for me to move up here. Because as long as I, my mind is going, as long as I'm constantly growing, I can create whatever life I want. That means I can manifest being put in positions that have accessibility. I don't have to worry about, oh, if I'm going to be able to get access to a place because I'm manifesting and putting myself in those spaces. And if I can't be there. Or you can create them. Exactly. Or you can create them. And so, yeah, it was that. It was being grateful for the life that I acquired by somebody else. Yeah, and I feel like you didn't, you didn't allow anyone to force you to live in the way and what he caused to you. Yeah. You don't live in that. No, no, like, I don't. Yeah. I don't feel like that is a part of your identity. It's almost like the least at this point. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously, to what you've accomplished, what you do, the mindset alone is well, you know, they always strength. say they always say that, you know, especially I grew up, if you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book, right? Yeah. So as I opened a book on nutrition, I fell in love with it, changed the trajectory of my body, my health and wellness, got into the gym, da da da. Mm. Well then I started reading on other levels. Mm -hmm. And that's where it happened. See, I was a high school dropout. I dropped out in the tenth grade. You know, so like wow. again, I talk about going in the streets, that's what I was trying to do. But I was never dumb to educate myself for things I wanted to do. So business management, accounting, I went to colleges for that. I just never completed. My point is, is that I was always willing to learn, just didn't know what I was trying to learn. And oh. what I did, I started reading books that helped me unlearn the person that I was. Right. You know, and once I did yeah. that, I was able to create my identity. I was able to be more ambitious, be more, you know, optimistic and go out and go for my dreams, but also mm -hmm. work for my dreams. See, that's the difference in a lot of people. They dream and don't work. Yeah. I decided to work and dream because my dreams didn't seem real to society because of my position, mm -hmm. right? Like, so for society's views, I, should, I am disabled. And by being disabled means that I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do... Well, I'm, you know, I live my life independent. Mm -hmm. Single father, been raising my daughter. She's 11 now, still killing the game in the parenting. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I travel alone. I do everything alone. I don't ever ro roll around with a pack. I'm mm -hmm. always by myself. And what it is, is I'm telling people that I can live my life despite the challenges, despite the adversity. I'm not going to let them stop me from going. Mm -hmm. So if anybody gets something from me, it's that we're tested in every way in life. The universe tests you every day. For me, everything that's adversity, everything that seems like adversity is just a test. So I laugh about it, and then I figure it out. Right. Anyone, let's say someone is born into a wheelchair. Yeah. We put those stigmas and all of those negative, you can't, 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 mm -hmm. can't, can't. We do that to them. Let's... If yeah. you, let's say a, you meet a six-year-old kid in a wheelchair and you're able to mentor him, there's no way he's going to have an I can't mindset or exactly. feel like he's limited by whatever, uh, I yeah. don't want to call it this, but an adversity he faces. No, I mean, I, that's why. A lot why of do with inf influence. A lot of my work is focused on children because, but then that's also why I'm grateful, hmm. right? Same thing you just said. See, a lot of people say, oh, man. You know, if I lost, I don't, I don't know, I hear it a lot. I don't know what I would do if I, I couldn't walk, yeah. right? Everybody thinks that. Yeah. What about the person that never had the opportunity? Mm -hmm. You know, you that selfish? And that's just real because it's like we are so selfish with the lives that we, we are given, mm -hmm. the lives that we have to embody, and we're not even looking at people that never had that opportunity. So it's a kid And we're today. talking about we can't. Yeah. It's like, oh, man, I can't do this or I can't see myself like that. Well, how do you see yourself? Because you should be blessed that you are who you are mm -hmm. instead of sitting there doubting or so... Really, in reality, when people say things like that, all they're doing is projecting their own perception onto you. Correct. You know, it's like, oh, man, I'm sorry that happened to you. Well, I'm living my life. You're going to be sorry if it happened to you. Hmm. It's a difference. And so in society, society projects like that. what their perception of anybody is. It's like black men, right? Society can have an image that we are right? criminals. That they and keep showing. So then that way, that's what they project every time they see them. So that's why you can't get a job. That's why you can't do that. Because in their mind, their perception of you is not what you're trying to you. do. Exactly. Same thing for disability. But if people actually took it in a different way and started being more mindful, like yeah. for me, it's a kid right now that was paralyzed at two years old that I've worked with over and over. And, you know, first thing that I thought about was he never even knew that he could walk. And so, can Isn't I be selfish? Enough? Right, like can I be that selfish and say, man, I just wish I'd walk again when this kid never had an opportunity or do I use my life to create my identity, to not be, to be, now be motivating enough to help him understand that he can do whatever he mm -hmm. wants because I'm not following the social norm of disability either. Mm -hmm. Right. And what I mean by that is when you think of disability, you put everybody in a bubble. 
Very true. And so it's like, this is what you can do. This is what you can do. But you can't go out here and do this, right? And so for me, I'm showing people, like, look at my life, right, from public speaking, which anybody probably can share their story, which I recommend. Mm. But when it comes to being an adaptive athlete, everybody can't do that. Everybody can climb ropes and wheelchairs and stuff like that. But what and is win competitions. And win competitions. <laughs> but what it does is it shows that kid that was... Yeah. injured early that he has that opportunity everybody can't model right but when you open that door up like for me to work with major brands and modeling and just doing stuff i know i'm gonna be uncomfortable at those photo shoots but it's bigger than me it's yeah. bi you know and it's like we're we're not here to worry about our lives as much as we're here to create a legacy for the lives after us. Mm. You know, like, and, and I think that a lot of people are not understanding that. So it becomes selfish. What am I going to yeah. do to make me happy for the rest of my life? And so you go miserable trying to do everything without serving others or helping people. And that's why you're miserable. And that's why with. you're miserable. And for me, it's like, no, it's different. How can I change a generation after me? Mm -hmm. That means I put in the work and sacrifice my body, my energy, my time, because that is what they're going to follow. That's what they're going to gravitate to, because they're gonna like, well, look at what he was doing in his position. So then where is my mm -hmm. excuses or do exactly. I throw him out the door? Exactly. Perception. All about is it. It's a mother. Yeah. Perception is our reality. Right? Our perception is our reality. Yes. I like to say I like to say I live in a fairy tale, but it's true and I, I do that on purpose. Like there's a piece of me I like to keep some kind of naivety. Yeah. Like out, out of sight, out of mind type thing. If I believe that something is just great and it's magic, it it's going to be that because that's what I believe. Yeah. And thankfully it's all worked in my favor that way. But I believe our minds are so powerful, more powerful than what a hand or a leg can do. Mm -hmm. And you've proved that. It Thank is. You. It is. Minds are everything. I think mindset, I think people should understand how powerful your mind is. When I started reading books and I understood how, you know, to control your mind and focus on your mind. And like, it, it, there wasn't nothing, no obstacle. Or, there's nothing that I can't go after. Mm -hmm. And then because I know how powerful the mind is, there's nothing that I can't do. Mm -hmm. You know, like when people think about success, I'm not gravi I'm allowing success to gravitate to me by going after the things that I love to do. Like, I'm not, I, that's it. I'm mm -hmm. love, I love to help people. I love to model. I love to do these things. So it's not like it's forced and it doesn't come off that way on camera. It doesn't no. come off that way. Anyway, when you look at my image, what you do is see, why is this person so happy? Yes, yes. And it, it is very genuine. But yes, <laughs> how is he so happy? That's why I needed to sit with you. You know, it's, it's one word. I'm free. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was, I would say that I had self-inflicted chains my whole life. And that's where the accountability part come in again. I can't blame nobody for be the life that I chose. I can't blame nobody because I didn't see outside of the communities that I was in because I could have easily did something different than being a follower, right? Because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. We end up leading and we care, we care so much about what people think of us that we will never be the person we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And for me, if I blame, you know, that's my fault. Yeah. Because if you I could have stepped out the Yeah, exactly. I could have stepped out the side of the box. I could have got and picked up a book, even though they said black people can't read books or don't read. I could have did all the things that I'm doing now, but I chose to live a life that I lived. I right. chose to react to disrespect the way I did. I chose to react to my emotions the way I did. It wasn't that anything happened that day without me choosing and making the choice. And all I did was deal with the circumstances that happened after I made the choice. Because mm -hmm. even then, if negative or positive, it starts here. Yeah. Like we, 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 I don't want to say we bring anything like that to ourselves, but if you're a negative person in general, if your outlook is negative or, you know, this person is an op or you're just operating in that mode, you, you bring it to yourself. Well, you know, you know, one of the biggest things that a lot of people where the negativity come from is love. You don't love yourself. Hmm. I never loved myself when I was growing up. I didn't have nothing to love. I didn't love my community. I mean, I loved it, right? 
but it was a different type of love. But I didn't have like this unconditional happy love for me, my body. I didn't love any of that. So I had all this negativity. So it switched from me wanting, trying to figure out how to love myself and what that looked like to trying to find love from everybody else. Mm. So then you're pulling because you don't love yourself. So when you have self-hate within yourself, it's all negative. Yeah. You don't care what people say. They're the people that want to put harm to you and do things to you because they never even thought about how much they feel about themselves. Because mm. once you love yourself, because I love myself, you're not going to care mm -hmm. about negativity. You're not going to care about bad vibes. You're going to leave that yeah. because now you understand energy. Now you understand things where you like, nah. You see that there's there's power in being the bigger person or rising rising above. It's not worth your yeah. time. It's not worth your energy. It's so draining to put energy into negativity. Mm -hmm. But it's so it's it's gratifying to put energy into positivity, mm. and and that energy you putting into that is effortless. Yeah, you're just making a choice. There's nothing uh, gratifying about investing into anything negative. It's so not. What are we expecting to get out of it? Almost. But in our reality, it, it, and I only speak for my communities that I represent, black and disabled. Mm. If you don't have nobody telling you that then people will feed into a certain space, right? Yeah. Because that space has been projected. So it's not that everybody can do what Wes did. It's that people have to listen to what Wes did to understand that they can do it too. Yeah. And I think that that's where storytelling comes in. That's where we have to keep sharing. How do we rose above adversity? Hmm. What are the things that we did? How do we take control of our lives? Because if we... Forget to share that part and only share our success. I think Nipsey says it best. He said, if you share your success and not your struggle, then you're a fool. Mm -hmm. And it's real because it's not about the people that's proud of your success as much as it's about the people that can see that in them now because of it and because yeah. of you sharing that journey. And they want to know how. They want to know how. You said something else. Right back to this, <laughs> you said... If you haven't experienced something yourself, I can't expect you to relate. Yes. And I, I believe I'm with you on that 100%. So tell me, how do you get people who have not experienced the things that you've experienced to relate or to gain some type of understanding? It's one word. Empathy. All you got to do is be empathetic and know that everybody's story is not yours. Hmm. I go out every day and, and people can tell me a story that's traumatic. People can tell me a story that's great. And I'm still going to have the same reaction hmm. because I'm not judging you. Right. So like it's like when people when certain things happen, people are judging you for your experiences. People are judging you for things and they're not carrying out empathy as much as they're carrying out their perspective. Mm -hmm. But if they carried out empathy and it starts where. You just understand that all stories are going to be different. You have to understand that everybody's going through something. Yeah. And when you understand that, you lead different, right? Like, and so I don't look for people to experience anything or try to, to have the mindset that I right. have. Nor do I go out into the world and think that people are supposed to understand me or I'm supposed to understand them. Mm. There's one thing that anybody can do is when you carry out empathy, you meet people where you where they at. So that means if a person is a fool, you tr you accept them as a fool. If there's a person <laughs> that's negative, you yeah. accept them as negative. You can't try to change that person because of your perception on them, mm -hmm. right? So like my experiences is my experiences, but who am I radiating to is what you accept. Right. And so it doesn't have to be like, oh man, I need to understand your experience. For me to understand empathize, you, correct. I just need you to empathize with no judgment. And that's where the problem in a lot of society is, is because people aren't empathizing as much as they're judging. Yeah. But it all goes back to love. It all goes back to love. Because when you love yourself, you're more empathetic because you understand you your give. struggles. Yeah. You understand what got you there. So if your struggles were somewhere, you got somewhere better, how can you sit there and look at somebody and be like, man, that person ain't going to be shit the rest of their life. You can't say that. Yeah. Because it was a point in your life where you never thought you was going to be who you are today mm -hmm. until you took control over it. That's why when I look at people, I see them and I accept them for them. And now is my opportunity to plant seeds in them yes. and help it grow. Show them what you see now, in them. 
I can't control you after I plant that seed. But what I know is that I planted it. So if you're not planting seeds, don't say shit. If you're not planting seeds, don't judge. Because all you're doing Mm. is going off your own perception. And you ain't even took time to give somebody else or took time to understand from empathy. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, They always pay attention to the cause, never... Uh, no, they always pay attention to the result, never yeah. the cause. Yeah, it's always instant. That you need it. You you don't look at the journey of anybody. For me, I pay attention to the journey. I'm around the disabled community, and it's so different, right? Like it's it's not just a person in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. It could be a person with a limb difference, an amputee, somebody that got cancer. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's causing them to be immobilized. It's all different things. It's all different elements. So yeah. when you look at it, everybody's struggling different. You know, someone be 40 even years, within that struggle, the struggles are different. Yeah, somebody could be 40 years old and just find out they got MS, but they've been selfish to a certain community their whole life that they're a part of now, right? Like, mm. it's, it's things like that. Like, you can never think that, one, it won't happen to you. Yeah. And I think that's the other thing. There's so much entitlement, so much privilege in the world that people are like, this ain't going to happen to me. Yeah. But hell, look at Kobe, right? Like, you can't say, now, that's a realization that it doesn't matter where you are in life. Look at Nip. Look yeah. at all these major figures. and you No didn't matter think, what good you're doing. No matter what good you're doing. So it goes back to how you want your story to end. And that's why every day you focus on legacy. You focus on change. And you focus on impact. But all of that can be so effortless if you focus on yourself. Uh Uh-huh. It's it's natural at that point. It's natural. Because you focus on yourself, then it's like... You done build, it's like building a car, right? So if a person build a car, they know it's going to run right. Mm. So if you built yourself and you know you're doing right, then that helps you build other people or give them the tools to build themselves mm. so they can have a driving car too. You're not going to be the person like, oh, man, I'm about to just, you know. <laughs> Imagine be- riding around everybody else need a ride. That's like for yeah, real. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. And they stranded. Yeah. yeah. It's like, See, oh, am I going to drive around on three wheels or four? Right? Like, and, 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 it's, and it's the same way. Am I going to give somebody, you know, I'm going to help them or they, I'm going to let them roll out on a flat and, until they just can't make it no more. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, then you feel like shit. So, you know, you got to go back to what, what makes you feel good inside. And sometimes it's always just going back to, you know, who you are. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know yourself, that might be where you need to first start before you even open your mouth about somebody else. Mm-hmm. High key. High key. <laughs> and, and, you know, and just be transparent. But that was the only reason why, you know, I was able to, you know, face the man that shot me. That's, that's the main reason because I know myself. I love myself. And I love myself now more than ever. So could I, I, I think when somebody asked me the first time, what, what's, because I started getting better in life, I started becoming positive compared to the person I used to be. Mm. And he said, Wes, what are you going to, you know, you all positive now. Like, it was real. This is real conversation. Like, bro, you positive fuck now. <laughs> like, so what you going to do when you see a dude that shot you? Yeah. And I was taken back because I had focused so much on myself. I didn't even think about it. I went through a lot of emotions that day. I went through anger. I went through all this. I started even thinking, like, where the hell he at? I ain't even thought about it. Like, mm. where this dude at? Like, has he seen me? And ironically, I said, okay. But I, I don't want to be a positive person with hate in my heart. Mm, you and can't so, be. So, again, that was a choice I had to make. Do I have a vendetta? Do I go around the rest of the world and act positive? And the moment I see him, I put him in the ground because of what he did to me? But then what would my life be then? It would be what I wanted it to be when I was before, yeah. before this happened to me, right? Yeah. Or do I just tell him thank you? And let him know how grateful I am because my actions even led to him being there that day that put me in this position because I took accountability of it. But now I love everything about me because I had to face the reality that I was really the main reason that I'm in this position. Hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't want to accept. How much we do we control ourselves. Yeah. It's like the person that had an a argument with somebody and then somebody come back and, you know, Something yeah, go yeah. down. It's like, I don't know why they did it. Well, if you just kept your mouth shut, not saying that you should have, yeah. right? But it's still a Cause choice. And effect. Still a choice. 
Everything is a choice. That's why they say, close your mouth, you probably be good, right? You open it up, <laughs> it might something go down, but at the same time, it's a choice. You chose to do that. No matter, it could be somebody in your face spitting everything. Your choice can be <laughs> to move around. Your choice can be, man, I'm not about to deal with this. You can yell at me on the back of my head. You touch me, it might be something else. But I have a choice to move through, right? Like, just like a lot of people, when stuff is happening, we mm -hmm. have a choice to call the police. We have a choice to call help. We have a choice to call somebody else that's not that help. Yeah. Right? A mediator. At the end of the day, it's choices. And everybody has a choice. And so what is your choice? And what, how do you want your life to end? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do, you want, how do you want your last day? Because you can make all these bad choices thinking you got the rest of the, your life and to make up your time it. is up tomorrow. And, you know. Are you proud of yourself? Are you proud of yourself or now do your eulogy? And, Ooh. you know, now does that speak all fake shit? Because I'm, I'm from the hood and I'm damn sure know half of the people yeah. that I've witnessed die and stuff. Hell, that obituary just spoke bullshit. You had to sound good because now you're not here no more. Mm. And for me, I didn't want that. The people left behind have to cover your tracks. They have to cover your you. tracks. They sitting there giving high hopes. You was in the college for three months. And <laughs> hell, they didn't tell you you got the degree. You know, like, come on now. If that was the case, then you know, we might not even be here. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, no. But if you can create your own reality, you write your own story. Mm then you know how it's going to end. You already know exactly what the reception you're exactly. going to get on that day. Yeah. yeah. It's all about legacy. Yeah. I was going to ask you, how did you live for seven years, like not knowing the details? But I feel like we kind of we kind of went there already. I don't want to take you back, but that shit is crazy too. Well, like, I know the... ring in my brain every day. Well, I'm, I, I wanted to know why, but I still had so much of me to work on. Mm. So I wasn't really worried about it. And you didn't think you needed that answer to be able to even get started? No. I, didn't, I don't think I needed that answer of why this happened to me because I knew in the back of my head rather I wanted to talk about it. I know my ass should have left. Mm. Like, period. I... Let's just no matter what he had to say, you just I should pulled, not have been so there. So here's the thing, and we just go through it real quick. My ex girlfriend, we broke up two, three weeks prior. She told me she was pregnant when we broke up. Ah. Uh. I just got so custody of my daughter. So as me trying to be this stand up man, trying to change something different in fatherhood, I felt inclined to go over and have a conversation on how we were going to do this baby situation yeah. because I knew the relationship itself was toxic. So I wasn't trying to have that where we get back together. Mm -hmm. But I did want to be a man to have a conversation outside of what I did when my daughter was born, right? Well, when I arrived, there was a male going in the home with her. Well, he never came outside. What happened was, see, I was badass, and I was already very hateful. So I had a persona, and she knew how I got down. Oh, I see. So that's what was communicated to the person inside the house. So he called somebody. Anticipating to, the way you might act. The, well, I was already at, yeah, yeah. going back and forth with her outside. So I witnessed him kind of looking out the window. So he had to call somebody like, shit, man, I don't know what was that conversation. But mm -hmm. basically, he needed a friend to come over to watch him because he didn't have a gun. So he didn't, he didn't have a way to protect himself, in a sense, yeah. if I had something. Right. Well, I didn't have a gun either. I had just went grocery shopping, so I had groceries in my trunk. The difference is wow. the mindset, right? So I called somebody myself over to bring a gun because I felt entitled to say, well, I'm not leaving. She says she's pregnant. So I tried this flag dude to yeah, come yeah, out yeah. to have a talk, but he didn't ever come out. So for me, I was now nervous. Because you already know how they're moving. And I'm move watching not how he moving. I'm like, well, shit, he keep looking out this window. He ain't coming out. What he trying to do? So I called a friend of mine. So when I finally found out why, it was more or less, well, I received a call. This is what was told. When I arrived, not only did I see the confrontation, yeah. I seen your friend with a gun in his pocket, and I seen you walking back to your car, and that's why I shot you. So even though I was thinking for years why it happened, yeah. the moment I heard it, I understood it. I was like, oh, shit. 
Yeah. And it was more or less, at least I'm still living because in reality, I've been in situations like that. I've been the person to get called on the phone. Hey, bro, I need you to come over here, dude, tripping. Mm-hmm. Hey, girl done pulled up or her dude done pulled up. and I'm gonna... It's a reality yeah. in just yeah. our community. So the reaction for him, his, it wasn't different as... My reaction wasn't different of calling somebody up. The difference was, was me understanding that. Yes. Yes. And that's, I think that was the power of it. So when I heard him even on TV and he told me the story for the first time, I'm like, oh, okay. And that's why it was so easy for me to. You already had put the pieces together yourself. You'd you'd put closure to it and you'd accept what it took accountability way before you met him. When that friend had asked me, what would I do if I had seen him, right? Like, it was that, that was my time to start to take accountability mm-hmm. because now it was more, I'm not playing victim. Yeah, right? like I was, no. and But I'd play victim for a long time, right? I used to mm-hmm. tell people that I walked back to my car, I was shot by a stranger. And that was because when the first story was done on me, they summed it up that way. I told them the same story I just told you, <laughs> but they summed it up. So in my mind, I said, oh, that's maybe how I should share it. So for a long time, I was just like, you know, I sum it up. Yeah, and I was walking back to my car. I got shot by a stranger. And I'm like, yeah, I never talked to him. Yeah, he was a stranger. But. Right. The truth of the matter is. I, all these things transpired prior to him coming. So not only did I, was I shot by a stranger, I basically had that stranger be called because of my choice of not even leaving. And he. You invited on, him. I invited him. You know, energy invited him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Thank you, Wes. Oh, I, appreciate I appreciate you for coming. <laughs> I, I, you did a lot for me. Like, you project. It's crazy. There, I watched Queer. I watched every season. There's not one person on there I'm inclined to talk to other than me. <laughs> like, there's a reason, I think, uh, that you're so successful. And God knows there's, there was a reason for everything. Because you, you project happiness you project light and i i thank you sincerely this is this first episode of protect your pieces it's great to be with you oh man well you know what it's an honor i truly think like even the concept and everything that you're doing i think it's gonna be powerful you know it's all about creating your own identity one of my one of my things that i leave with is just for anybody listening watching it's all about creating your own identity and letting the world accept that Stop trying to be the identity that the world projects. Mm. Create the identity that you want the world to accept. Yeah. When I had the idea of doing this show, my friends were asking me, they're like, are you depressed? Like, this is depressing. Why do you want to tell these kind of stories? But it's because all of us have these horrible stories, but not all of us have come out on the other side and are an example of what it looks like to push past that and to do better for yourself. A lot of us are stuck in what our trauma is. So that's why I wanted to do the shows because I know that there is hope. So I would like to share that with others. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, This has been the first episode of Protect Your Pieces. I have Wes Hamilton here with me. Would you like to give him your at name? Yeah, so it's at I am Wes Hamilton. Yes, he is a very handsome model for Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> Check him out. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Can I give you a hug, sir? Yes, yes, yes. I don't want to get my makeup on the white tee, but thank you. Oh, that's thank good. you. It's good.